My second talk that is very with very preliminary findings in maturity, I say I can say is about the knowledge and the use of indigenous numeral system among Southern Cushitic speakers. And uh, this will be for Southern Cushitic languages spoken in Tanzania. These are Iraq, Goroa, Burunge, and the Alagua. And uh, these languages are spoken in the Rift Valley, the convergence zone. And the uh, Iraq is spoken in Bulu typically, Karatu, Hana, and Katesh, and uh, they are now extending to the nearby districts and the regions. But the Goro are spoken in mostly in Babati and the some parts of Hana, extending to some parts of Bereko. And the uh, Alagua is spoken in Kondoa, mostly some part of um, Hana, and also some parts of Babati, and uh, the Burunge is spoken in Chamber districts in the Dodoma region, particularly in Chamber, uh, Goima, um, Mirambo, Pampai. But for this case, I didn't go deeper to, so I collected data for, actually for each language, I collected data from two uh, words. And um, the aim typically was to know the speaker's knowledge about their indigenous numeral system, and uh, then what is their usage in the real context. And then uh, this is spearheaded by the fact that languages are changing and uh, this mostly as, uh, uh, affect the aspects of languages and the numerals as one of the aspects. And uh, the issue is that uh, when two languages or more than one language are in contact, then there is this tendency of the dominant language or numerals of the dominant language to replace the numeral system of indigenous languages. And this is not only for the case of minority languages. For instance, if you go through the Comri 2005, uh, there is the endangerment of uh, numeral system of language like Japanese in the Thai. Then the Japanese can later comment on that because this is what I read from Comri. Uh, and uh, some of the reasons offered by why this vulnerability of indigenous numeral terms is due to sociolinguistic change that arise through language contact. This is according to Mreta, uh, studies on Bantu languages, and almost he conducted studies on 13 Bantu languages, and he found that the numeral system of these languages are endangered and mostly due to the contact with Kiswahili, and the most endangered language is Shimalila, and the Chimalaba, Chimalaba. And uh, this is due to the development of multilingualism in the context of language use. Um, in Tanzania, Kiswahili or Kiswahilization process is now continuously um, penetrating into the interior part and uh, towards the ethnic languages. And uh, therefore, due to its wider communication context, then Kiswahili is now used. In, and uh, most people, even in the rural area, are becoming more fluent in Kiswahili. And not only that, because Kiswahili is the language used in the primary schools as the language of instruction. And uh, once the uh, children join to the primary school, it is where now they start to learn the numeral system of Kiswahili. And uh, due to also mushrooming of uh, English medium in some parts of the towns and the cities, children are also exposed to English numeral system. And uh, what is happening is that this issue of Kiswahili as a medium of instruction was cited as one of the problem or as the reason for the replacement of 
in this genus numero. And they also um, Reta found that one of the issues is rapid globalization in which most of the youngsters are exposed. And you see that using the numerals of the indigenous, of the um, dominant languages or languages that have higher prestige is the fashion to most of the youngsters. But also there is the comment from Combre said a community encountering another community with greater numeracy may well borrow the missing part of its system from other community, but the contact may also involve replacement of part or all of the existing system, and it can also affect a language that came into contact even where there is no great influence in the numeracy, but just the culture and the commercial superiority of one group over the other. That means contact may result to borrowing of the missing parts, particularly higher numerals, like um, and also replacement of the existing or all of the system. And this happened to Chimalaba. But also all the members are passing away and with the indigenous knowledge without <coughs> passing them to the next generation. Therefore, in most of the languages, numerals one to five is in use while the higher one are replaced or displaced by the dominant language. And this is uh, cited or said by Ami Amaechi findings that young people and even others who have proficiency in their mother hardly use the conventional se sequence of their traditional numerals, hence borrow from English or from other languages that they are proficient with. And therefore, with regard to this background, the, this preliminary study examined the knowledge and the use of indigenous numeral terms among Iraq, the Roa, and the Burungas abbreviated with a gap specifically assess the structure, the uh, numeral structure, examine speaker's knowledge, use of indigenous numeral terms vis-a-vis -vis Kiswahili in day-to-day -day communication, and determine reasons for maintenance and the susceptibility of some numerals. And these are the results that is Ira Goroa and the Burunge. Um, when you are talking of the languages, there are very few of these speakers are monolingual, particularly those who didn't attend the primary education or unschooled one, but most of the, them are bilingual and some few are trilingual in either Kiswahili or the other ethnic language and they are ethnic language or the neighbor language. As a common practice to any other society, speakers of uh, Iraqi, Goroa, Alawa, and Burunga can be classified in, uh, by social characteristics like education, occupation, age, and the sex, and this also uh, has some effect in the knowledge and uh, the use of these numerator terms. And, uh, Occupation, I consider the farmers and the pastoral. These are classified as lower social class with primary education or some do not have. But another group is made up of education, educated professional business persons. And these are categorized as a middle class who at least have uh, um, more than primary education. And also they have interaction with other communities and uh, therefore, this study also involved the informant between 10 to 80 plus, although it was so difficult sometimes to get people more than, uh, speakers more than 70 plus uh, due to the life expectancy. And some of them, when you go, they cannot speak, they cannot give enough data, or they cannot understand really what you want. Then it was difficult to at least get 75 plus in the areas, but since, I was still going on researching the same then. 
I will go into the interior uh, to see if I can get more the, the people or speakers more than this age. But as a result then, I go to the analysis of the structure uh, because when doing this, we need also to know the structure, although it is not new to most of the uh, members here. But by doing so, then I was able to categorize uh, basically based on previous works, particularly Kisling Mouse, a lot of mouse works uh, did the issues of Southern Kushitiki numerals. I found some of the these topics in the readings and from Kisling too. And therefore, basic numerals are basically categorized into basic and derived numerals. And then this basic are uh, number one to ten and a hundred and a thousand. And this has their protoform from the work by Kisling and the mouse to zero zero one. But the other one are derived in numerals and these are many as shown in the table there, there's the the Ira column, Goroa, Alawa, Burunge and then the other I just put column for Kiswahili and English. But if you can go through, uh, with Iraq and Goroa, we don't have problem up to one thousand, from 10, 100 and 1,000. They have retained the, the protoform. But if you go to Alawa section and the Burunge from 100 and the a thousand, there is a borrowing of Kiswahili. Although I found uh, this derivation of this form, maybe remove this is a derivation from base 10 by multiplication. The same applies to a Burunge, maybe remove. Uh, there is a problem, it is maybe remove and not maybe remove, maybe, maybe. But then I I found other speakers are saying no. We have our, our term that is called the Miberi Mib our Mib means Miberi Mib our Mib for a southern. This is a very old person. Not so much old, he is nearly seventy, but he is eager and he prefer to use the language Miberi um, Mib our Mib for Elfmoja means uh, he say we have two times uh, 10 times 10 times 10 yeah to get a southern then burungi the uh, same maybe maybe uh, that is but if you go to the protoform that i can later show then this seems to be derivation and not the basic and uh, with iraq and goroa they are close and they retained the Tiru and the Kuma for Elf Moja for a Southern. But again, I when I interviewed some of the old Iraq, I found they have terms for uh, 100 Southern and for 1 million. And they say they have Kumer Tiru, meaning that you times 100 times a Southern to get that. And then Kumer Kum. Uh, southern times southern, but if you later I can see in actual sense they are not using the term they just have, and uh, these terms seems to be archaic because they are not even known to people AD sixty below, even sixty uh, above, but only to those people who really like to have a tendency of using language and keeping it. But if you go to the Goroa section, then they have Lucky from Kiswahili, and they have Milioni. The same to uh, Alawa and the Burunge. Burunge have Milioni Le and the Lucky Le. But if you go to one, in the, very, the second uh, row, you see Alawa, Goroa, and the Burunge, they have Wak, but Burunge, they have Le meaning that they have maybe lost somewhere, I don't know. Um, you can say because in the protoform, 
we have work and do not lay. And if you go again to the protophon later, we can see uh, this thief, uh, Ira Goro and Alagua, lost the final vowels and Burunge retained the final vowel, as in Chada, Tami, Chigaha, Kwani, Laho, Fanko, Dagati, Goleti, Mibi, and etc. All these other languages lost the final vowel. Um, as in the table one, when Alagua and Burunge, one Hundred and the southern are replaced by Kiswahili, Mia, it is Mia and Elfu. Though documented list has indigenous term, but I also found in Kinsley 1994, he has such a derived terms for Burunge and the Alawa, and also in Ethnologue, I found the terms. But they don't have the terms for uh, 100,000 and a million, the same applies to Alagua, Iraq, they have. And um, all basic uh, numbers are morphologically single, but only 100,000 for Alagua and Burunga. And um, another thing that he needs um, further investigation is the use of this weight um, for two. In case of Burunge, the sound ch that we were discussing when uh, Hilda discussed the issue of borrowings from this Ahoysan. Uh, but I went through the data uh, proto uh, forms from Kisling and the mouth to 004. Uh, one, I didn't find this proto sound, the sound ch in the proto sounds. Therefore, this needs further investigation uh, before completing the work to see when this sound comes. It is from uh, Sandawe because Sandawe are in contact with this. And there are a lot of this word. You can see Chigaha instead of Sia. It is replacing this Sipsi. Again, we have another word like Chede for blood and etc. They have a lot of that sound in their language, but it is not found either in Alawa, Iraq, and Goroa. It is in between Cha and Itza. Now, it is common that Iraq, uh, the Southern Cushitic numerals, uh, higher numerals are derived through multiplication, uh, through addition, uh, also through addition and the multiplication. And um, now, as you can see that I said, the most common numerals are one, two, southern. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, a hundred, and the southern. But we don't have those terms uh, for a hundred and a thousand for Burunge and the Alawa. Maybe they have lost, and that is why they are deriving through base 10. And uh, this is just uh, another issue that w uh, when I was doing my uh, study, I also uh, need to know whether the people, uh, the speaker can remind or can use or use the gesture or number gestures. But I found very few old people can point through the gesture, but that is not uh, to the young gener generation. Even I cannot do, I very rare, but I, I, I only can point to one, maybe two, and at least five maybe, but this one, yeah. you see I'm doing like this, yeah, therefore, this one. Five. Okay. Therefore, this knowledge is no longer uh, and continues uh, disappearing among the speakers uh, because it is not uh, taken to the next generation by the old members. But when now we go to the knowledge of indigenous, we, this cannot be uh, generalized to Southern Cushitic languages. We have to. I. I have to 
specifically go directly to one language after another because the range differs from one language to another. When I go through Burungi, I found majority of the speakers in Pampai and in some in Mirambo are those who I was uh, engaged with them. Most of them can only count from one to two nine, hardly ten, they cannot remind that. But only I found two old, one is 65, the other one is 54. But they can do, and it is the one who was able, because I found most of them interchanging uh, five and six, and then eight and nine. Worse enough, I also interviewed the um, two, three members of Burunge from the SEAL International, and they are doing translation. And that I, I afraid because they are doing translation, and again they give me the data that is, um, is I don't know, it is misleading. Uh, it is the knowledge that they have. Uh, I, ha I have the soft copy. I don't know where I placed it, but they they printed the copy, and when it comes to eight and the nine, they say eight is quality, and the nine is Dakati. Uh, here, this one, you see, number eight is quality, and the nine is Dakati. Then I have that information before going to the field from the seal. And when I go to the field, I found two old people and they are saying, no, eight is Dakat, Dagati or Dakat, Dagati and nine is Goleti. Then when I go to Iraq, Alagua and Goro, I say yes. Then these people somewhere, they lost totally the numeral system and when they revive, they come up with something that is new. And this is true because uh, 95 of the interviewed uh, people or speakers, they also interchange between Koani and Laho, 6 and 5. They are in mixing. They cannot say exactly. Ukimuliza, when you ask what is 6, they are say Koani. Then 5, Laho. Then there is this problem with these two. And what is now happening is that because SEAL are now doing re revitalization and the literacy uh, awareness to this particular group of Burundi, these particular facilitators are still using this, uh, the new system of interchanging these numerals. Then this brings some problem to me when I was uh, in the field and uh, I told them they have to change and they have to go and when I go to the data from Kisling 1994 I found the series like as it appears in Iraq in Goroa and the Alagua then there is a problem people in the field know that nine is Dakati and uh, eight is quality and this is what is now in the Bible translation. Yeah. Okay, that is what is happening in Alagua and in Burunge. Uh, most of the, the, the most of them can count to ten. They have knowledge of that, but this is even the uh, speakers with fifty years, forty years that I interviewed. But if you go to Alagua, then at least they can count uh, to 99 because already they don't have uh, 100. But if you then generalize the finding, you can find most of them end up 20, 10, 50. There are a lot of such ranges. And if this is particularly in those villages when there is no interaction with Irangi people who are going to. In Humai, I go there, and in Kwadinu, and in specifically, most of them cannot really exactly count. And I also use the technique of asking their years of birth. When were you born? He cannot tell. 
or a, a person of let's say a two, uh, 65 he or she cannot tell but don't talk of young people they already don't have such knowledge but I also went to Goroa. In Goroa, uh, in villages, I decided to go to Gidas and they found people can count up to 1,000, most of them. But when you go to age below 15, then this is the problem to most of them, they cannot count. And I will tell the reason that they give themselves that why cannot, they cannot count uh, most of them are secondary school students and the primary school pupils. But again, in Iraq, uh, they, it is also different that they can count up to thousand, and also most of them have knowledge for uh, one hundred thousand and a uh, million. But when it comes to the use, then it is also the problem. Um, with Goroa in villages like Ibonga, Galapo, Himiti, those are near the Babati to Kondoa Road and the, around the Babati town, also all the people cannot have such a knowledge to tell it. Very few can count using their indigenous knowledge. But now going to the use, this is what happened in the use. With Burundi and the Alago, I don't have a problem because they can count until somewhere. Then when it comes to the use, generally they are using Kiswahili. Very few are using the low numerals from 1 to 10. And they exactly said we are using at least in our daily communication, uh, when ordering issues in the market, in, at home, we are using 1 to 10, 1 to 10. It is easy to say. And what they are doing, even though they are using Kiswahili, they sometimes code a mix, like a person can say, uh, um, voucher, maybe, miakoani, miakoani means miatano, or one, uh, uh, 500, mia Kiswahili, koani are the indigenous team. Therefore, they are mixing, but sometimes they are using totally. When I asked it then, for those who have children, what kind of numeral system the children used, or you you order you um, you communicate with them, they are saying we are totally using Kiswahili terms because that is what they know. They cannot sometimes understand when you are talking to them using the indigenous terms. But with Goroa. Again, the same things, but at least in the rural area, you can find people are using. At least you can find in Miberikoan 50, you can hear in the um, uh, terms of the speakers. Uh, I also interacted with people in the uh, rural business center, like cafe, cafe, cafe whatever, shops, those small ones. And they, when people order like a cafe, they can uh, order, mm, please can you give me um, a cup of coffee of Miatano, 500 shillings. They sp he can speak or she can speak in Goroa, but when it comes to the issue of number terms, they are saying in Kiswahili and not in, in Goroa. But when you, it comes to the use, they also rent to those maybe 20, they can say Miberisar, or 30, they can say Miberitam, but those expression like if the Latina 35 or 70 something and the, um, or 500 and 70 something, they cannot say. But unfortunately, when I go to the Iraq and with the knowledge that these people can, they show the uh, uh, outstanding knowledge of the, the indigenous numerals. And uh, what I wonder is that even in Kwermuth, I found people are using um, Kiswahili terms. And I found to even interact, asking, ordering, uh, things using my mother tongue 
and they are responding to me through Kiswahili. I asked you how this, um, how this, um, how can fried egg, eggs cost? They are saying miatan. A cup of coffee, miane. This is a very in the very interior. I also went to somewhere in uh, Katesh, down in Gehandu, and they are doing the same. I found all the people playing what is called the karata. Oh. Yeah, cards. They are saying mine is six. Sita. Kuminane, I met Mebaki. Remain Kuminane, Lakini, he's, they are speaking in um, Kiswahili. Uh, this is some of the conversation I collected if, when I was traveling from Babati to Mbulu this day. And uh, some of them were collected in Bulu town and in uh, some villages, in coffee cafe shops or kioksi, what is called. You see, these are some of the examples of the conversation. I just catch the a few. You see, mbao tano laka ine, or pehai tano au ine five or four woods. These woods, not wood. These are some of the examples. But also, you can hear kilo moja, one kg. Or millioni ishirini, the other saying millioni gwalel, nine million, interchanging. Uh, Badarasa mawili, elfu moja miatano, barami atisa, maybe nine hundred, like, like, okay, barami atisa is talking of the range of the, uh, some saying he, he talks, say elf kumi, ten thousand, and then comes to say kume mibang in Iraq and the other said it was the student I asked him which number uh, did you get in this examination uh, I was asking him in Iraq and he said Anahe Saba I am seventh in the class the other I asked him what is the fare for from Babati to Haidom and the, 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 this bus conductor um, told me he, he is not from um, taking people to hide on, but he said, Ahuaka tam an elfusita lara elfusaba. He is talking, I don't know if it is the 6,000 or 7,000, but talking, uh, other expression in Iraq, the other, the term is in Swahili, and they saw other examples. Then, when I back to the slide, it, I found some of the reason I asked him why then this is happening because they told that no, what is happening now is that we are totally using the Kiswahili than English. And then I asked them why. Yes, the one is the dominance and the superiority of Kiswahili that is perpetuated through its use in formal domain. And some are saying, since the declaration of Kiswahili as a national language by Mwalim Julius Kambarage, then we see that our language is nothing. I don't know if that is, that is what they are saying, because these are not my reasons. They are offered by those people who are involved. In. Uh, but other, like in Goro, in Goroa, some Goroa speakers, Burungi and Dialago are saying, we are now in contact with Rangi, with other people, Chaga, Pare, and therefore when it comes uh, during the meeting and whatever, we have to use Kiswahili because if I can speak mine, then it is like I am, uh, I am excluding them, it is like I am perpetuating tribalism and this all sort. But others say that uh, tradition of elders to pass the indigenous knowledge Generally, language and the numeral terms is now not because I know when I was young, we have the tendency during the evening of um, uh, some kind of uh, folklore and the, the issue of games like Mugu, 
and that exactly uh, involved counting in hierarchy. Then these are not now existing in the society or in the, among the speakers. But also one of the big problems said by, by children, youth, and most of the parents that these issues of early schooling that started from the early school, that is age four to five, then seven for primary school, uh, causing the children fail to master the indigenous knowledge. And most of the children say that when I, I, I before going to the school, I can count up to maybe 50, 100, and I know. But when I go to the school, then because they don't want to, us to speak our languages and they restrict us then they teach us Kiswahili and English it is where now I lost the counting knowledge of this and it, because we are also not taught in at homes our parents are insisting us to to understand and to know counting through Kiswahili the languages that are used as schools that is what also said but also most of the informants, particularly youngsters, are saying Kiswahili is also used by parents at home, and therefore there is the issue. An increase in the establishment of business centers in rural places in which there are a lot of interaction is another reason said by this particular informant. But also, I said the prohibition of ECLs in uh, schools is another reason and the also language attitude. A big problem mostly to the Burungi and the Alagwa is the language attitude. Most of them don't want to identify as Alagwa or Burungi. Neither of them, they shy away and they don't want to speak. They also don't want to identify as this. I don't know what is happening to this because I didn't go further asking them. But one of the informers just say, uh, because this language is nothing, and it is not used anywhere, then we need Kiswahili and English. And therefore, to conclude, indigenous numeral system of minority languages was more susceptible or vulnerable, and thus endangered or extinction due to contact with dominant languages. In long-term contact situation, the result of multilingualism, numerous of dominant languages are borrowed and replaced. And uh, what is happening is that, although this is not what is happening, the replacement is happening in the mind of the speakers because already they are, have been documented. All four languages, they have numerous system well documented, but they are not in the tongues or minds of the speakers they cannot use. And uh, all this is the issue of marginalization of the ethnic languages. And uh, this is not only happening to Southern Cushitic, but to other uh, ethnic languages of Tanzania. And uh, thus, we need deliberate revitalization to rescue the traditional numeral system, to make them aware, to give them or to build what is, you can say, the positive attitude toward their language. And thank you, this is what I can. Thank you very much, Prasvina. Questions, comments, discussion? Yeah, yeah that's happening now. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, 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 I'm shocked and, and about those the confusions with the eight and nine and five and six. Yes. Uh, but I have a question to the audience on something that a question that has bothered me now for a long time. Can you show the reconstructed number numbers, Crispina? The reconstructed one. Yeah. The, the, List. Yeah. This one. Yes. So Roland and I reconstructed this set. It was not very difficult. 
becomes interesting when you try to link this to the rest of Kushite. Uh, because, well, we can find the equivalent of ta, but it means two. We can find the equivalent of, uh, of uh, tziga, but it means three. <laughs> and then from five on, <laughs> so you see that <laughs> when she talked about the confusion. <laughs> and if anybody has ever any idea how, how that can happen, that the numbers shift, so the tzad is the newcomer in the system, it may be to cut for the meaning of the origin of that word, but it has intruded into the system What's it against that context? The six, seven Confucius not so bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I also thought it's a bit, you know, I couldn't make sense of it. But yeah. You know, if you think of, of numerals not as semantically denoting entities, but as a sequence, yeah. that would then make sense because you just just shift the sequence. So what you learn is you learn one, two, three, four, five, not with reference, but just as a, you know, one after the other. And if then you have a new one, then then you would shift. Well, no. No. It would seem like it would create a lot of confusion, though, in, in the in the changeover, right? If were used by anybody, unless but these were semantic. innovations, right? But any semantic change would cause confusion. Mm. Yeah. If it's replaced it and not added it. Mm. And this is sort of a larger question. I don't. Yeah. I, I but the speakers told me that it reached some somewhere that people were not using the the, the indigenous numeral terms. So this is a larger thing, though, Crispina. Like when we talk about when we talk about like the borrowings, so these Swahili borrowings, are they replacing borrowings? Are they replacing indigenous terms, or are they additive? Are they being put in for concepts that are essentially new? Now I know that like we consider numeral systems. You know, you can do whatever you want with them. You can go up to yeah. infinity. Yeah. But I suppose the question is, you know. Maybe there was a point where people didn't need to count past, you know, even 20 or 30, right? Yeah. You probably couldn't keep a herd of cattle that large unless you were very, very wealthy. Yeah. And nobody's going to count the stars in the sky. Yeah. Right? So really, I guess, you know, did people only really need these large numbers, like 1,000, 2,000, when money started when people started counting the years that they were born. They are no longer need that because I think even when when we asked the uh, Alagua and the Burungi they are saying by those days we don't have uh, because we have cows maybe crops and the farms then we cannot count until a hundred. Well so I don't know so, if it's, yeah. So they, that is why they can only remember one to at least 99. Mm, that right. is the commonly used. Right. But again, this commonly used are now affected. But do you think that these large numbers, like, you know, 1965 for a birth year, do you think that that was a number that was ever used in the indigenous system? Or do you no. think that these large numbers, so perhaps mm. these this Swahili these Swahili borings is actually a new system to deal with the concept that's that's new. Yeah. So that might be something to think about if you if you take it a couple steps. Okay, thank further. you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you. I have I have quite a, a few <laughs> things. I have quite a few things to say. I think it's it's really interesting. One of them follows on from what Lutz is saying actually. So I think about um, so learning the alphabet, right? So I you know, some years ago I learned the alphabet. But if you really put me on the spot and ask me, is R before M, I have to, like, it takes me a little bit longer to think about it, mm -hmm. right? And I can get there, yeah. but it doesn't come, so still for me, the alphabet is a series. So I learnt it as A, B, C, D, D, D. Mm -hmm. um, And I think numbers is similar, but it's slightly different. But I could, you know, I don't know, I could probably get to Japanese in one to 10. But again, if you ask me on the spot what six is, I'm probably starting going one, two, three, four, five in my head, and then say six out yeah. loud. Yeah. So I think it fits with this idea of a okay, we can maybe get a new one and you shift things along, which fits with yeah. six, seven, eight, nine, or whatever. Okay. Um, 
I, so I think that's an interesting idea. So the flip side of that, which I think almost contradicts it, is that I think with numbers it's really important to be specific. So if you're thinking about other borrowings and other contact, then if you see a chair and you point at a chair and you give me a new word, I sort of think it's that chairy thing and something else comes in and I think, oh, that's also a chair. And this is like also with child language acquisition, right? We sort of broaden out and then we narrow down and things like that. But if it's 6,000 or 7,000, it does actually matter if it's 6,000 or 7,000. And I wonder whether that, so linking that to money, for example, something that's important, it does become almost like 5,000. Yeah. It's not actually 5,000 know, cows or 5,000 stars no. or anything. It is 5,000 shillings, shillings yeah. which almost becomes separate from 5,000. Mm. Like it's almost no longer the number 5,000. Mm. It's like the note. Mm. The note, yeah, exactly. The note 5,000 or the note 10,000 yeah. or whatever. It's not a collection of 5,000 things. Mm. No, mm. it's no. like this now yeah. becomes... It is about money from 100 becomes, up. It is about money. Well, not even up, though. So it's like 5,000. So you learn 5,000, you learn 10,000, you mm. learn 1,000 or whatever. And so in this case, Swahili becomes the common yeah. language when you talk about money because of this high level of different languages. Um, so you could almost imagine that, yes, in shops, people say 5,000, regardless of what else they're talking about. But you still might expect that if you're doing kind of elicitation, you're sitting mm -hmm. someone down, they might still be able to go one, two, three, four, five, you know, okay. maybe whatever, as far as they can. I also found another context when I was in Mbulu Keto Market. I was just there popping, listening what people are doing when exchanging or bargaining for uh, Keto. Uh, I heard some kind of innovation. Uh, just saying, uh, work nazar. When I'm saying work one and one and two means one and five, commonly one and five or two and five, meaning one hundred thousand and fifty, something like that, and fifty. Work nazar. Therefore, work nazar means more than what they mean as one and two. They have a lot of innovation when they are bargaining for. Um, my final point, I don't know what the studies are cross linguistically, but of course, even in Swahili, some of these numbers are borrowed, right? So, mostly mm -hmm. seven, mm -hmm. what is it, six, seven, and nine are from yeah. Arabic, and you know, some languages still mm -hmm. use you know, different systems and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, it would be nice to look at that within a broader perspective whether there is often confusion between six, seven, <laughs> other yeah. some that are more mm -hmm. and more likely to. Bigger than yeah. this. Yeah. Or if you have a base five system, so maybe one to five is really stable, but then you have you know, five plus one, five plus two, mm. something to do with that. But with, with Allah, with this Southern Kushitic, I think there is no derivation with this base yeah, five. Yes, just, just a basic. Yeah. 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 Mm. Um, I just recently finished yeah. transcribing a discussion between two old guys. And uh, they started with a story, and then they started complaining about taxes. And uh, when they were telling the story, I noticed all of the all of the, the numeral terms were, were they were uh, they were good Gorwa numeral terms. The reason was you know, mm -hmm. Then when they started talking about the the fines that they were imposed for not paying taxes, they started with large numbers, so Mia. For example, I think that that's because it's the value of the, the mm -hmm. coin, right? They yeah, were going to find a Mia. So it referred to the coin, not to the number, right? Mm -hmm. But then once they started saying Mia, or they would say Alfu, when they started saying other numbers, and when they started speaking, again, they would sometimes switch to Swahili. So it was almost like just the invocation of, of mm -hmm. that word yeah. kind of bled out to the rest of the. So it is like semantics? Well, it was almost like it was almost like this. These Swahili sounds almost triggered, and it was funny because the interviewer was like, "Come on, Grandpa! Like you have to speak Gorwa. The white guys are going to get angry at you." <laughs> but <laughs> what I see, if one. they come to the number of Keto, for instance, in the knowledge of Iraq, they are using Iraq terminology. He cannot say, "I have maybe Ngombe uh, Mia." I'm sure you know? they can say that. He can just say. Hikwa, zero. 
I'd be interested. It'd be worthwhile doing a little bit of reporting. Therefore, I think we <laughs> need some kind of, that is why I say this is very preliminary mm -hmm. uh, kind of uh, work. It needs some kind of uh, further investigation. But you have count in the mind. Yeah? I mean, I can only count in Dutch if I have to quickly count. Uh, yeah. uh, in, in just not allowed but in my mind. Mm -hmm. So you, you do that in the language in which you, you learn that. Okay. But again, Professor, I asked you, very old person who can speak well in Iraq, Unamia Kamingapi. He just say 70, Sabini. And not Miberi Fang. Tala Al Kurugala, 1995. But of course, years aren't important. Years are years are a new thing that were imposed. Because before before the before the colonial forces arrived, there were no numbers to years. There might have been there might have been age set names, names of generations. There were names of who was chief. There were names of who was the rainmaker. But in terms of when you were born. They it didn't, refer it didn't to matter. events. You return to refer to events. So mm -hmm. the numbers, and especially if somebody's living in a traditional milieu, an older person might not care. The very first person that I interviewed uh, for Gorwa, I wanted to do the information, you know, how old are your grandpa and all that. He said, well, I suppose I'm about 200 years old now. <laughs> and the guy that I was sat down next to, the guy I was sat down next to said, Grandpa, like, you can't be 200 years old. And he looked at me and said, Suppose I'm about 100 years old. <laughs> and so then after that, we went down the street, and I did the same thing. And, uh, and uh, so it was another old guy. And I said, well, how old are you? And he said, well, how old did that guy say he was? <laughs> I said, well, he said he was about 100. He said, well, I'm about 150 then. <laughs> and it's not, it's not that they're being silly or ignorant. It's the age isn't you know it's what you've lived through and what your status is in the society and you've come to me as an elder so I want to you know I'm going to show how I'm very old I'm really old so it's kind of like when you're asking like what year that's notoriously difficult that's a hard one you know even if even if I asked like even if I asked you know somebody who's quite proficient in Swahili it might take a little while maybe not somebody who's quite proficient in Swahili but maybe somebody who's comfortable in another language and then asking them in Swahili, well, when, what year? You might say Sitini Natano, but it would, you know, to say Afu Moja Miatisa Sitini Natano, that's a bit of a, yeah, it's a bit of a mouthful, right? It'd be great, it's like the linguistic test. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could do some experimental. Numbers are really cool. Yeah. The, the lady that I lived with, her favorite soft drink, she would always send me to the store, she would say, Fang Go. Yeah. Seven, seven up, go. Seven up. Funk seven up. Seven up. She was teaching you. <laughs> we used to use it all the time, teaching me the wrong things, right? Or maybe she wanted to be ultra, ultra conservative and teach me the. But also, I again asked one or uh, two of the secondary students, Gehandu, mm. um, and one of them is was born in 2002, mm -hmm. Sadi Nilizaliwa Kurkumi Oh yeah, but I get, people never get the, the year numbers, right? Then they can remember of Elfu mm -hmm. or a southern. Mm -hmm. Do you see? Most of them fail to remember Elfu Moja. I think maybe southern. it's less of so it is, in terms of like, if you're looking at it very strictly, a failure. Yeah. But maybe it's kind of like, you know, maybe the idea of precision isn't really, maybe with your age, yes, but like, I feel like there are only very, very few contexts in which saying your age exactly is extremely important. When this guy's out with his friends and stuff, I mean, they already know. They're not going to ask him. I think it's important to be older, younger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a relative thing, right? I do counting things. You know, I think the, the bank account is what matters, but yeah. in many I mean, three or four maybe matters, but seven, eight, the higher you get, the less it matters. Hilda will be more familiar with this as well. I think that the Hadza have one, two, and many. 
Mm. For people who can only carry what they have on, on, you know, on their backs and stuff. There's I mean. actually been a study that links these simplified numeral systems that don't go further than two mm. to hunter-gatherer societies. Yep. Mm -hmm. If you well, stop being hunter-gatherer, you start acquiring more numbers and vice versa. And I guess because you're, you know, maybe it has to do with sedentariness. I mean, you start acquiring more things as well, and you need to accurately count them. Mm. 